everyone. This is Michelle Mandel from Gone Fishing, and I cannot do Happy Monday like Renee does. So it is a happy Monday, although it's raining outside. So um, welcome to Gone Stitching on Blog Talk Radio, your show about needlepoint and embroidery. I am your host today because Renee is very sick and has no voice. Um, so she forced me to do it. Uh, today is March 22nd, 2010. Um, and we can be found on the web at www.gonstitching.net. Um, we have a great class coming up with Lynn Payette. I just want everybody to know because it's fabulous and she's wonderful. And the dates are May 16th and 17th. And we are signing up. Uh, people are signing up now. So also I wanted to mention the dates um, that we will be closed for Passover Monday the 29th through Tuesday, April 6th. So please pick up any finishing items or threads you might need. Um, let me get to our guest, who is Melinda Weeks McKay, owner with her husband John of Weeks Dye Works. Weeks Dye Works makes hand over dyed threads and fabrics, including pearl cotton sewing thread and wool fabric. Hold on, let's see if she, she's going to come on. Melinda? Hello. Hi, Melinda. Yes, hello. <laughs> yes, can Hi, you actually, hear me? Actually, Miranda. Uh, uh, Miranda. I can hear you. Great. That's okay. Great. So you have this company that that uh, puts out all these threads and fabrics, and how did it start? How did well, you um, I do have... I kind of was in the right place at the wrong at the right time, and I um, sort of started it almost by accident. Um, to make a long story short, I was in school of design back in the early 90s, and I thought I wanted to be an architect. Um, I realized I was not three-dimensional, so I took what they call a swing studio. I took a studio mm-hmm. outside of my major and took a textile fiber art studio and really fell in love with color and dyeing especially. So... But my husband says he jokes that I got a degree in a hobby and then it turned into a business. <laughs> but I, when we were, when we would do a project, we would learn how to do a weaving or we would do batik or I made a quilt. Um, we made paper. We learned lots of different historical processes. And every time we would learn a new process, my favorite part was the color. So if we did a weaving, I would dye my own yarn, and I would enjoy that part more than I actually enjoyed the process I was supposed to be learning. So I kind of ended up specializing in color and dyeing, and at the time did not know it was something that I could turn into a business. I thought I would probably end up being more of an artist and selling finished products. And then to make the story, the long story short, I accidentally met some ladies in Denver that were very popular cross-stitch designers at the time. I was trying to sell them fabric that I had dyed. They thought it was really pretty, but they wanted me to do some thread. So I did some thread for them. Um, their company was called You and I and Friends, which they are no longer in the business, but they've sold their business, so I guess the company is still in existence. It's right, not right, the same original ladies. Um, so I, I did some thread for them. They put it in the cross-stitch kit, and then that was back in 94. And over the next several months or the next year, they, they had told me um, in the beginning, if I was serious about doing it, that they – you know, they thought that there was a need and that the the colors would do well. So I just took it as an opportunity that I could make some extra money, still having no idea it would turn into a business. I thought it would just be a way to keep busy and then sell what I did but not really not become anything substantial. And then, you know, over the years it's turned into a business that now we, we died. Um, our original line was the cross-stitch thread, the six-strand embroidery floss. Now we have two- and three-strand embroidery floss. Um, we have pearl cotton three five eight and twelve, and we do wool fabric and we do linen fabric. So we've well, expanded over the years. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I just have to tell everyone that I asked Miranda to speak because I'm really nervous, and she's doing a great job. <laughs> so I just wanted okay. to know that. So well, this is the first would... time I've ever been interviewed like this, so I'm nervous as well. <laughs> Um, so you've taken this hobby and now you work about 10 hours a week, right? 
Right. <laughs> no, I seem to work a lot. <laughs> Although I do have a very good staff, and I don't have to work as hard as I did in the beginning. For the first few years, it was me by myself, and I did everything. So now I do have a full-time dyer, and there are a couple people in production, and then I have a great office staff. So I have three children, so I don't work as much as I probably could, but I still work more than I should. <laughs> I, so, anyway. I know just what you mean. Um, I kind of um, t- tend to, I say, um, I don't know, I I feel like I am busy, but I could always be doing more. But I also am very fortunate that because I do work for myself, I have the ability or the, um, I don't know the right word, the luxury, I guess, of being able to work, but then I also get to go on field trips and that type thing, too. <laughs> Right, so with I, the children. I know what you mean. I get to take the field trips, and Renee gets to stay at home working. So that's how we've always okay. worked. <laughs> no. well, um, my husband has become very involved in the business, so when I'm not there, um, he is probably – he's an architect, and we met when we were in school when I thought I wanted to be an architect, and now he is a full-time architect as well as a full-time business owner for Weeks Dye Works. He does all of our computer type stuff. He does the website. He does our machinery. Um, He's kind of a jack-of-all-trades. So I really wouldn't be in the same position if he weren't as involved as he is. Yes. Um, And speaking of your website, I'm looking at it right now, and um, which is www.weeksdyeworks, W-E-E-K-S-D-Y-E-W-O-R-K-S.com. and the colors on you can see the colors of the different um, threads, and they're just they're fabulous. Right. Um, Thank you. Yes, yeah, so if you go to catalogs, um, it's just great. And of course, we use mostly um, because we are needlepoint and not cross stitch. We use mostly the pearl cottons, um, and we love them. Well, thank you. Uh, our biggest they, line is our embroidery floss, but we do have a lot of Pearl 5 and some Pearl 3 and Pearl 8, and then we've just recently introduced a line of Pearl 12, so that's our newest line. Well, we need more Pearl 3, so... Okay. <laughs> I, in fact, I have a list of colors that I'm working on for you. <laughs> okay, great. I know. My employees were very excited to uh, to go up and ask for specific colors, but they're wonderful <laughs> to... Um, they're wonderful to shade a sky or grass or anything like that. Um, so they're just very helpful in our stitching. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. So hmm? what about the fabrics? I mean, how is how is dyeing a fabric different than dyeing the threads? <clears throat> it is. We actually, um, all of the fibers that we do are cotton. Right now we are working on a wool line. Um, like a similar to Medici, it's mm-hmm. Bella Lusa wool. We haven't really officially introduced it yet, but that um, will be the first time we've dyed a fiber that was not cotton. So the nice thing about dyeing the cotton is we don't have to heat it as high, but now that we're doing the wool, it just kind of makes it a little more complicated because we have to bring the temperature up so much. But mm-hmm. the fabric we do in these big kettles and they're soup kettles, and so they're like a 40 or 50 gallon soup kettle and we do have to heat the wool fabric and the linen, but not as much. But um, it is dyed. We use similar formulas. I call them recipes, but they laugh at me because that's an old-fashioned term. So now we use formulas, but um, they're dyed differently, but we try and have the end result the same. So if it's wool fabric and it's deep sea is the color, then it matches the thread in deep sea. Um, <laughs> but because they're heated, it's a little more time-consuming and, I guess, laborious. It gets – there's a lot of steam. So so how do you get the colors to be the same each time? I mean, because your dialogue.